But first, it was a cold, calculated murder and Helen Milner nearly got away with it. On her first attempt to kill Phil Nisbet, she didn't get enough poison into him. He went to hospital but survived. A few weeks later, she was successful. Not only did Helen Milner kill her husband, but she managed to convince the police his death was suicide. Phil Nisbet's family weren't convinced though, and now more than four years later, now that Helen Milner has finally been convicted of murder, her former sister-in-law wants an apology from the police and compensation. John Hudson's my name, I'm from the uh, Sunday programme. Yep. Two years ago, Sunday we caught up with the curious uh, Helen Milner. Uh, your former husband's death, Phil's not death. Understood. What, what, sorry. Back then, so Helen Milner was apparently just an ordinary important. housewife. We're doing a story about it for the television. No, I'm not interested. Why aren't you interested in talking because, to us? Because I have been through the mill over all of this. Yeah. But Helen Milner's facade was starting to crack, to to and worse yeah, was to and come. The police are trying to charge me with murder. Well, for a suicide. the real Helen Milner was emerging. Don't touch my card or I will have the cops on you. Now, f*** off. Did you kill him? No, I did not. If I had, I would have been arrested by now, would I not? Well, you may be arrested. So I'm not sure. you put all this on TV, are you? Well, I may be. Good. You sure you... you'll be in court for that. You sure you, want, you don't want to be on TV yourself? No. Mr. Four Person, please stand. But last December, Helen Milner was on TV, charged with murdering her husband. Part three, do you find the accused guilty or not guilty? I enter a conviction on the charge of murder. More than four years after she poisoned Phil Nisbet, the law finally caught up with Helen Milner. So who is she? Why did she kill her husband? How did she fool the police for so long? She's evil. She knows what she does and she enjoys it. Ben Porter is Phil Nisbet's son from a previous relationship. Back in 2005, his father married Helen Milner, and Ben soon realised the smiling bride was a devious manipulator. She said that I was ruining her life by taking my dad's attention away from her. Ben says Helen Milner went to extremes to emotionally control him and his father. She tried to make it look like she was committing suicide by overdosing on her insulin right in front of me telling me, here, you want my life, take it. Uh, I think she did that twice. You know, it's, it's not a mental case thing. She's just grown up with no consequences where she... Leanne Cartier is Philip Nisbet's sister. She says there are questions to be asked about Helen Milner's upbringing. You start a child from an early, early age with no consequences. This is where it goes. She thinks that we're all stupid and that she can get away with her shit. When we first met Leanne two years ago... You know, what gives someone the right to take someone's life? She was appalled that the police were treating her brother's death as suicide and had not arrested Helen Milner. She took my brother's life and no one was doing anything about it. It's like, where do you go? What do you do, you know, when there's no justice in the justice system? The way Leanne saw it, there was no choice but to kickstart an investigation herself without the police. They didn't do their job, I did their job. You know, they totally failed. Phil Nisbet had gone to bed at his Christchurch home one night in May 2009. His wife, Helen Milner, later told the police she had found her husband dead the next morning with an empty packet of Finnegan beside him. It's an allergy drug that is fatal if taken in high doses. My husband's dead. Okay, all right, I'm talking to Helen. I'll look after you now, just stay with me. Yes. Where is he now? He's in bed. <laughs> but even though the police were at first suspicious, further investigation was cut short. They called their boss out and he, he just looked at it quickly and went, no, treat it as a sudden death and um, wouldn't call out the CIB. Phil's death was treated as suicide, but had officers gone just next door to speak with the neighbours, the police might have been more suspicious. My wife actually asked Helen straight out that day Phil died, why the lights were on at 4.20 in the morning, and she didn't answer. Did you express those concerns to the police? The police never come to see us. 
The police might not have been interested in interviewing Ray, but Leanne Cartier was. Yeah, like after I saw you that time, like I contacted the police and mm. and said about the lights and that, but they just they just didn't take anything seriously, I don't think. You're saying the police didn't even do the basics? They never spoke to her boss, the person that she worked with in the office every day. What would Helen Milner's boss have told them? That she talked about killing Phil a year beforehand. And if the police had bothered to speak in depth to Casey Woodstock, the mother of Helen Milner's grandson, they would have discovered something even more shocking. We've heard that Helen Milner actually asked for help to murder Phil Nisbet, is that right? Yep, asked us if we could pay someone to do it, find someone to knock him off. So she actually asked you to find a hitman to murder him? Yeah, specifically in her words, was a hitman. Why do you think she wanted him gone? The money. It was always about the life insurance. What would she say? Specifically that he had $250,000 life insurance and she wanted it. Casey believes not only did the police ignore what she was saying, but also what her ex-partner Adam, Helen Milner's own son, was saying about his mother. He saw Helen Milner crushing Finnegan tablets and putting it in Panadol casings. There was this one occasion when she came in a couple of days, it was a couple of nights before Phil actually died, came in and asked where the closest 24-hour pharmacy was for Finnegan itself, like straight out for Finnegan. And when Phil died, what did you think? Instantly knew that she'd killed him, straight away. We told the police straight out when they came and seen us. So you actually told them you didn't think it was suicide? We told them we knew it wasn't suicide. Yep. So why didn't police investigate further what Casey and Adam were saying? Well, that's what Leanne wanted to know. They weren't even taken seriously. It was easier to sign a, a statement for the coroner and say that they saw it as a suicide. What should they have done? A full investigation and, you know, interviewed everyone. You know, treated it like a homicide. After the break, the heat's on the police. The officers went to a murder and came out with a suicide. And Helen Milner's final act of cruelty. I, I hate her. I would never forgive her for what she did. By 2011, it was becoming apparent Helen Milner was no ordinary housewife. She appeared in court charged with stealing from her employer and framing her own son for another crime. You come on my property Take and it you've had it. But the true extent of Helen Milner's offending was only starting to emerge. When did you know for sure that she had murdered your brother? When she handed me the suicide note and the signature wasn't filled and it was typed. That suicide note would later become crucial in convicting Helen Milner. The fact that it was typed really threw me to start with and it was just like I read through and it's like, yeah, without a doubt, I, I knew 100% at that point she'd killed him. Leanne had shown the signed suicide note to Phil's friend and neighbour, Ray Carey. Did you think that was Phil's signature? No. Why not? Just something, Sonny, I'd seen his signature before and it just didn't sort of match up. But that's not all that didn't match up. Helen Milner handed the police a second suicide note with no signature on it at all. But even this didn't get the police digging further. Their official line remained the same. Phil Nisbet committed suicide. I needed to know the truth. I needed the truth out there and sometimes you've just got to go out and find it. In the end, the breakthrough came when Christchurch coroner Sue Johnson released her findings into Phil Nisbet's death. She couldn't force them to reopen the case, but as long as she ruled as not suicide, it was out there for us to fight the police to reopen. So Helen Milner could have got away with it? She probably could have got away with it really easily if she'd used her brain and stuck to one story and obviously not talked to everyone in Christchurch about killing them and poisons and everything else. But in Helen Milner's mind, she had got away with it. Just weeks after her husband's death, a new lover, Barry Hayton, moved in. He'd even bought her an engagement ring. 
Helen and Barry slept in the bed that my brother died in. She's totally evil and horrible. And Prompted by the coroner's report, police launched a new investigation into Phil Nisbet's death. They soon discovered Helen Milner had withdrawn cash near the pharmacies where she'd used false names to buy the Finnegan used to poison Phil Nisbet. It just involves um, detectives getting off their butt and going to the pharmacies and asking questions, um, getting all the bank statements. You know, it's not, it's not rocket science, you know. I think it would be um, CIB 101. Wasn't the first investigation into Phil Nisbet's death a total botch up? Oh, I think that's uh, being a little bit unfair. That's certainly your description. I accept that there's things that could have and should have been done better. Detective Inspector Tom Fitzgerald manages Canterbury's CIB. The officers went to a murder and came out with a suicide. You're talking about officers who attend, you know, in 2009, 755 sudden deaths. People make mistakes. What are the lessons here for the police? Look, since I've been in the chair in 2011, the structures I've put in place, this couldn't happen again. The CIB attend all suicides. They're treated as suspicious until proven otherwise. So I'm confident that under my watch this could never happen again. They should all be named and shamed. They were claiming wages for, for doing a half ass job. I want a public apology from the police involved to the family um, admitting their failures and I want compensation for my costs and the stress it's caused us all. Leanne Cartier says she wants an apology from the first inquiry team. Is that fair to expect that? I think that's fair and I, we have apologised. I think Leanne wants an apology from the individual officers. Would you like to see them do that? Look, if that's what they, you know, that's an, there's employment processes in there, but if that's what they would like to do, then that would be something that could be done. Leanne Cartier wants compensation. Do you think she should get it? Look, there are certain things possibly that Leanne needs to be compensated for, but you know, I think those discussions are better had over a period of time and the realities of what things actually cost rather than in this type of environment. But no amount of compensation can repair the damage Helen Milner did to Phil Nisbet's son Ben. She not only murdered his father, but in a final cruel twist, one of those fake suicide notes implied Phil had taken his life because he'd discovered Ben wasn't his biological son. After that, we had DNA tests and everything just to prove that I was my dad's son. What do you think was going on in her mind? Oh, money, money, money. I want more money, get him out of the world, get, make him have nothing so I get more. So she thought if she could show that you weren't Phil's son, you wouldn't get any money from his will? Yeah, she would get all of it. Don't really want to hear the name again, never. I want to forget her. I, I hate her. I would never forgive her for what she did. Four years after Phil Nisbet's disturbing death... I enter a conviction on the charge of murder. Helen Milner was Stand finally down, found guilty of murder. Leanne Cartier and the rest of her family are in no mood for forgiveness. I will be at every parole board hearing and I will fight to keep her in there until she dies of old age. No one on the streets is going to have to deal with that woman again if I can have anything to do with it. And Helen Milner will be sentenced later this month.